most important thing about GPT-5 or whatever we call that is just that it's gonna be smarter. But I think that's like among the most remarkable facts in human history. I'm curious about how good it might be at tutoring someone in math. This AI is gonna be able to see the world. Could you fall in love with a robot? Think about a world where talking to a computer feels just like chatting with a friend or even more. OpenAI has introduced a new version of ChatGPT called GPT-40 and it's so human-like you might think you're talking to a person. This advanced AI doesn't just understand you, it talks back with a friendly and sometimes flirty voice. It's almost like the movie Her where a man falls in love with his operating system. AI girlfriends are already becoming a big deal. When OpenAI launched the GPT store, many people created AI companions. These virtual friends are there for you without the complications of a real friendship. Now, with GPT-40's ability to talk in real time and express emotions, it's clear that OpenAI has taken things to a whole new level. Will people start forming deep, emotional bonds with these AI? It seems like a new era of relationships might be just around the corner. It's hard to overstate how amazing this new technology is. It has been shown by OpenAI that robots can now talk with humans in real time. The conversation is almost like a phone call with a real person. If the final variant works like the demo shown, it seems clear that OpenAI has demonstrated how much AI will change our world. OpenAI might soon be valued at $80 billion, which would make it the third most valuable startup in the world. Even though venture capital funding is down, investing in AI startups is still strong. It has been reported that OpenAI is in talks to make a deal involving employee shares that would raise its value to $80 billion. For the company that makes ChatGPT and DALI, this would be three times its valuation from January. If OpenAI reaches an $80 billion valuation, it will become the third most valuable private company in the world. It would surpass Stripe and Shein, sitting just behind ByteDance and Elon Musk's SpaceX, according to market research by CB Insights. This would also make OpenAI the most valuable company in San Francisco. It would be worth more than tech giants like Meta and Google, which are both quickly adding AI to their products and services. Analysts say that because of strict antitrust rules, big tech companies are now working with startups instead of buying them outright. Last month, Amazon said that up to $4 billion would be invested in Anthropic, an AI company in San Francisco that competes with OpenAI. Microsoft, another big player in the AI field, owns 49% of OpenAI. Microsoft's partnership with Mistral AI, a French AI startup, is being examined by the European Union. The deal aims to bring Mistral AI's top models to market. The European Commission, which oversees European regulations, is looking into how this agreement might affect competition. A spokesperson, Leah Zuber, stated that the agreement has been received and will be analyzed. Microsoft and Mistral AI mentioned that their partnership focuses on selling Mistral AI's main models. These models will be available on Microsoft's Azure AI platform, helping Mistral AI reach more customers worldwide. Microsoft has invested 15 million euros in Mistral AI, a French AI startup. This investment will turn into equity in Mistral AI during its next funding round. Mistral AI, which is only 10 months old, reached a $2 billion valuation after its latest funding round in December. Mistral AI didn't respond to Quant's request for comment. The UK's antitrust watchdog is also investigating Microsoft's partnership with OpenAI. The Competition and Markets Authority will check if any party has more than 50% of the voting rights over the other, according to Politico. You have probably heard about GPT-40, the new flagship model from OpenAI. The O stands for Omni model, which can understand and reason across audio, vision, and text in real time. The demos were impressive, but let's look deeper into what makes GPT-40 special. This model aims to create a more natural way for people to interact with computers. GPT-40 can handle any mix of text, audio, and image inputs and outputs. It responds to audio inputs in just 232 milliseconds, similar to a human's response time in conversation. During a demo, it felt instant with no noticeable delay. This model is faster and 50% cheaper to use through the API. It also has improved vision and audio understanding. Earlier versions like GPT-3.5 and GPT-4 had voice models but they were very slower. The big difference with GPT-4.0 is how it handles tasks. Earlier models use a pipeline of three separate models, which slowed down things. Understanding this change helps explain why GPT-4.0 feels more natural and responsive. Before GPT-40, the system used three separate models working together. First, one model would turn audio into text. Then, the GPT model would process this text and generate a text response. Finally, another model would turn this text back into audio. This process, using tools like Whisper for audio transcription and a text-to-audio engine like Eleven Labs, meant that the main intelligence lost a lot of information. It couldn't directly understand the tone, multiple speakers, or background noises, and it couldn't produce laughter, singing, or emotional expressions. 
Now with GPT-40, everything is handled by one model trained to process text, vision and audio together. This means all inputs and outputs go through the same neural network, which keeps more information intact and allows for more natural interactions. Since GPT-40 is the first model to combine all these elements, we are only beginning to explore its capabilities and limitations. They specifically mention advanced data analytics. They're also making GPT-40 available on the free tier with some limits. Plus, users will have 5 times more message limits. They mention they'll roll out the new version of voice mode, which is the cool demo thing we've been seeing. In its alpha state with chat GPT+, meaning the paid version, they'll be doing that in the coming weeks. Developers can now access GPT-40 in the API as a text and vision model. Again, it's two times faster, half the price and has five times higher rate limits compared to GPT-4 Turbo. The audio and video capabilities will be launched to a small group of trusted partners in the coming weeks. So we might have to wait quite a bit for the public release of the audio and video capabilities. Interestingly, Sam Altman updated his blog with his latest thoughts on GPT-40. He pointed out that they're putting very capable tools in the hands of people for free. They're doing it without ads, which is his response to critics who say that OpenAI is not truly open, meaning not open source. He stated, we are on a mission to provide very capable AI models. Sam Altman is saying it's still a bit surprising to him that it's real. Getting to human level response times and expressiveness turns out to be a big change. Yeah, watching the demos, it's very responsive. If you start talking, the way it stops talking seems a little bit sudden. Like it just kind of paused mid-sentence. It doesn't sound like a human being that stops talking. But we've got to say, that's probably so much better than adding a lag or anything like that. It might take a little bit of getting used to, but that lightning fast response time is incredible. He's saying talking to a computer never really felt natural for him. Now it does. In one of the very recent interviews, maybe two days ago before the launch of this new model, Sam Altman said that he believes that the iPhone is one of the best pieces of tech that humanity has. And to us, it sounds like they made a deal with Apple to integrate OpenAI technology. GPT-40 is faster, so OpenAI's new O model is fast. It's exciting to see how much faster and responsive GPT-40 is, and people seem really happy with the improvements. Based on the response time and just looking at the interface, it's still using the old voice engine or whatever you want to call it. It's not the new voice engine, which is what we expected since that's kind of what they spelled out in the blog post about new model availability. Some people are saying Grok is still about twice as fast. And again, when they talk about Grok, they're talking about the chip. Whereas this new Omni model looks like it's just all in one, capable of taking in audio and outputting audio all within that one model. We feel like it's going to be faster no matter how fast the Grok chip is. When we speak something, it gets compressed to just text, losing facial expression, intonation and all context other than the written word. So what do you think about this update? Share with us in the comment section. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. We will see you in the next one.